Okay, so this is the acronym for memorizing physics formulas. Okay, S, what does S stand for? Let's start from speed. Okay, what's speed? Yeah, speed equals to distance. I never on the mic. Speed equals to distance over time. What's the SI name for distance? Uh, yeah, this is meter per second, right? So, of course, this is meter. <coughs> this is second. Time is second. Okay, next one. What does A stand for? Acceleration. What's the formula? V minus U. Yeah, V minus U over T. What is V U T? Final mass initial over time. Final mass initial over time. D. Density equals to? Yes. What's the SI need for mass? Uh, kg. Yeah, so this one kg, this one meter cube, right? Uh, F, what's F? Yeah, so force equals O, you can get that? No. Why? No. Huh? No. You forgot. Okay, what's M? What's M? What's M? Mass is in terms of kilogram. A is in terms of? Hmm? What? What? Hey, like acceleration. What's the acceleration? Yeah, middle of the second square. Very good. Next one, P. You went P. Power. Very good. Power equals to uh, W D over T. Alright, what, what is the acceleration for power? What? Work done? Work done. Work done. Ah, Joe's right then second. Okay, we're gonna go next P. Also for surface area. Yeah, pressure goes to force over area. Oh, you didn't get it as well? Uh, pressure, P for pressure, okay? Pressure goes to force, uh, this is second and a half. Force over area. Okay, as I need for force, meter and area, meter square. What's the as I need for pressure? What does PSM for? Pascal. Who discovered Pascal? Pascal. Yes. <laughs> Craya. What's wrong? Craya. Pascal is a human being, right? Wait, let's see. Is Pascal. Uh, Another person, I, yeah, I don't know. This looks like the Iron Man, right? Iron Man guy. This one looks more, maybe different people draw. Okay, uh, they look quite similar, right? Pascal. Mr. Pascal. Yeah, so he, wait, is he the correct person? Who is Pascal? <laughs> is he that discovered? Uh, right here. Another human being, okay, it should be him, right? So young, huh? Very good. Okay. All right, next one, W. Weight. Weight. Equals to? M. G. M is math. G is? What's G? Oh, 10. 10, yeah. So we can do gravity. Next one, work done. Force times distance. What is the SI unit for work done? Joe's force is? Newton, this is this, meter. All right, so this is a sad FPP. We, we should find another acronym, okay? This one looks so sad. Sad FPP. <laughs> okay, that might like, it works, right? It works. Okay, next one, electricity. E, 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 what, what does E stand for? <laughs> Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? What does e, is, e is energy. Energy is in joules. Joules. T is time. So it's second. P is power. Power is in watts. V is volts. Uh, volts. R is resistance. So ohm. The two I's are current so it's ampere okay EPD okay next one i equal to i equal to what 
over t. Right, so I stands for current. Uh, this in, in terms of ampere, this is Coulomb charge. It's charge. Okay, charge is in terms of Coulomb. I think it's, I don't know how to spell, C-O-L-O-U-M-B, I think. Right, but it's a capital letter C, right? So this is time, so it's in terms of seconds, it's current. Ampere, okay? Then uh, two more formulas, energy formula. Mm, GP equals to, yeah. Yeah, MGH. Right, and then we have KE. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so what's V? Okay. What? What's V? Velocity. Yeah, velocity, correct. And? Uh, A mass. What's, what's this? As I believe, of energy. Energy. Joules, yeah. All right, that's it. Any more? Actually, got the a moment. What's the formula for moment? Yeah. Force and perpendicular distance to pivot. All right. <coughs> so the S I for moment is the M O R. Newton meters. Because this is Newton and this is meters. That's it. Any more? Actually, there's a few more. Right? Electricity, there's actually parallel and series. Okay, I didn't go there because uh, we wait until we have we, we have it, right? So how many have we memorized? Yeah, let's count. Altogether there are like 33, I think. So you already know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Uh, so how many more? All together there are 30, 33. Yeah, minus 15. 18 more to go. Yay. Okay, and you only set three, so it's fine. All right, so moving on. Okay, I printed the thing, so I'll uh, pass it to you. Maybe you'll get that. We will do a try. So this is energy, work, and power, which means you will be using more of this, this, this tool. GP, which is MGH, gives a half MV squared, right? And uh, power, power is here. Work done over time. So P equal work done over time. Uh, pressure, I don't think you'll use, but you also use W equal MG. Definitely. Um, forces, I think, I don't think have, a, right? So it's more of just energy, work, and power. All right, so I'm gonna leave it to you to try to do, now the time is 7.48, let's take 15 minutes to do as much as we can. So let's go through the MCQ, all right? MCQ. Okay, which of the following is no work being done by the force applied? Uh, everyone? B. B for boy. Yeah. Why is that so? It's uh, right. Formula for work done is force time, distance, right? So when supporting a weight above the head, uh, there's no distance, even though there's force. So no work is being done. Next one. Did I just write this? What's the kinetic energy? B, yeah, that's correct. How do you get that? Yeah. Yeah, so formula half, mv squared, k equals half mv squared. That's pretty simple. Uh, given which three, what do you put for three? Hmm? B is correct. Okay, I think this is very easy. Next one, four. Did I do? C. C. Uh, what was this? P minus F minus P times F. What's this? Wait, wait, what's P? Friction. Okay, so a force pull F pulls a mass M up an incline of length S, right, and height H against the friction P. Uh, between the work done by the force. <coughs> What's the work done by the force? Okay, the answer is A. Yeah. Four is A, right? So formula for work done: force times distance. 
Now this force uh, is not the F net, okay? They are looking for they are not looking for F net. M net the force net force uh, happens when we try to find the F equal M A the acceleration when there is net force. Here is just this force cooling, and this force is used to overcome the friction. So you cannot minus friction. Yeah, because you need that force to the work done uh, includes the force that removes. Sorry, not removed, that overcomes the friction. So you can't minus. Okay, so I say it's A. This one. Pendulum. Where is maximum kinetic energy? B. Yeah, that's right. So the lowest point here, right, is the point where there's the greatest kinetic energy. Next one, when the brakes are applied, can I go higher? Did you know? Yeah, C. <clears throat> okay, most of it is kinetic. Okay, let's try this. Uh, force moves this is complete the table. So work done equals the force times distance. So just multiply. What do you get with this? So, first one? 20, work done 20 joules. Force times distance. So it. Hmm? Okay, wait for that. So what's the SI need for distance? Okay. Meter. Meter. Now this is centimeter. Centimeter. So you need to take it times. Uh, change to meter, right? So 0 0.25. Okay. Uh, so answer is 2. Two joules. Right, next one, Elijah. Twenty newton, yeah. So uh, same formula, right? Force times distance. So to find this is divided by this. <coughs> okay, so the next one, five times something gives you zero point two. So all you have to do is take uh see one gun equals to force. Times distance, right? So to find D equals to W over F. So 0 by 2 divided by 5. 0 0.04 0 meter. Okay, next. Okay, so a coconut falls from a height of 10. Describe the energy transformation. Uh, so what energy you want again? Yeah. Very easy. GPE to KE. Okay, so the speed when it hits the ground. Yeah, yeah. What's the speed when it hits the ground? Yeah? No, don't have somebody. Oh, also don't have. Do you write anything? Huh? Nothing. Yet. Okay, so let's go through together. Uh, we've been done something like that last week, okay? So the first thing you need to do is to find uh, the GPE. Because, you see, here is the clue. GPE convert to what? KE. So what's the formula for GPE? MGH, right? So MGH must convert to half MV squared. Remember, remember, we did a lot of this one. So what is MGH? Mass, do I know the mass? Don't know. I don't know math, right? But I know the the height is ten. I mean, I know this is g is ten. So I will leave mass as m. Okay. So what do I do here? Ten m times. Uh, let me use another color. <coughs> so it's easy to see. Yeah. So m times g is ten, and the height is ten. Okay. Should give me how mv squared, right? So, now over here, what are, okay, sorry, height is 10, height is 10. So use algebra, 10 times 10 times m, 100m, equals to half mv squared. So how do I get rid of m at both sides? Man, but this math is session now. <laughs> Cancel, right? So remove this. No more M. So 100 equals to half V squared. So to find V, uh, 200 equals to V squared. And 
Therefore, V equals to square root 200. Yeah. 14, what? Why? What's the answer you need? Good, 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 good. <laughs> not volume, it's not volume, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meter, <laughs> meter per second. Uh, velocity meter per second. Okay, so that's the that's the answer, right? Which is pretty fast, you know. So you'll die from a coconut hitting your head. 14 for one meter per second eh? in one second. Eh? That's 10 percent, uh, no, five percent the speed of sound. Super fast, right? So when you gonna one on the head, that's it. <laughs> Not that we will gonna any, right? All right. So you understand how to do? You wanna copy this down? Okay. You're gonna see this pretty often. Continue. So we have this uh, toy, a trolley of mass to be released from rest from the height of zero point five. Wow, so long. Travel one point five reach the bottom in kind of speed. Oh, so they give us a lot of information. What kind of energy and how much energy does the trolley have at the top? So what kind of energy? GPE, right? At the top. Okay, so everybody knows this. So GPE. Uh it's GP at the top. So uh formula equals to M G H. Uh which in this case, <coughs> what's the M? Two times ten times what's H? Hmm? H, eh? H, eh? H, eh? <laughs> so this, now can you can you can you see how important SI unit is? But this is a bit weird. Uh. How can you be just one five C M? Just one five C M is only <laughs> I I suspect there's a bit of a problem, okay? Because you see it says zero five meter and then it says zero five C M here, right? So we are we are gonna you know remove the C, okay? Right, see, ah, uh, it should be zero point five meter, so zero point five meters. <clears throat> okay, so the answer is ten, ten joules of energy at the top. That is part A. Then part B. Uh, what is its kinetic energy when it reaches the bottom of the inclined plate? <clears throat> so k equal to half mv squared. That means it's still 10 joules. Okay, no, wrong. We cannot do this, okay? Because they're asking us to calculate using this thing. So the ke equals to uh, k equals to half times two times. Can you see they gave us this thing? Three. So three squared. So the answer is nine joules. Right? So these are the actual figures. Actual figures means uh given to us, right? So it's ten joules at the top, <coughs> then when they travel down to the bottom it came nine joules, and we all know what happened. Okay, how much work is done against friction? So in case you don't know, I mean uh, you don't know how to find. But all you have to do is to refer back to uh, your SI unit for work done. What's the SI unit for work done? And joules, right? Then you suspect, eh? What to do with this one? The 10 and the 9, right? So work done against friction must be 10 minus 9, which is equal to 1 joule. Huh? So 1 joule is used to overcome friction. Then D, what is the frictional force? Okay, how to find the frictional force? What's the frictional force? <clears throat> All right, so we go back to our formula again. Um, what? You see, work done is one joke. What's the formula for work done? Uh, so WD equals to work done equals to force distance right so the work done against friction is one that means this value is one so what is the force force is a pressure mark okay and what is the distance that the this thing travel see you travel uh, 1.5 so 
1.5. Okay, so to find the force against work done, all we have to do is F is equal to 1 divided by 1.5. And we get this one divided by 1.5, 0, 0 0.67. 0.67 newton. That's it. Okay, so that's once again. You know, um, I'm just using formulas. Look at the keywords and uh, I just put the correct formula. Just put in whatever I know. Then the unknown you can just find. Okay, so it's not too bad. All right, have I done 10? The bullet thing? No? Okay, you want to give it a try? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Plenty of time. I didn't record that. Yeah. Okay, anyway, see you next time. Okay, so calculate the kinetic energy of the following object, a bullet of mass 20 grams traveling at 200 meters per second. So here we have a couple of problems. Number one, the mass is in grams. Also nice, right? Because our SI unit mass is in kilograms. Now the velocity is very good, meter per second. Uh, ms minus one means meters per second, okay? This meters per second. So how to find? Okay, I know you all know how to find, right? So just tell me your answer. Um, what do you get, Elijah? Question ten. What? Six hundred joules. Huh? How about you? What do you get? Joules. What? Do you have an answer? No answer. Wait. What's the formula again? Kinetic energy. Yeah, this is a formula. Yeah. Half, half is half, right? What's the mass? 0, 0 0.02. Huh? Wait, what? What are you talking about? We are doing a 10, right? Oh, you say 11. So, what's the answer for this? 400. Oh, okay, okay. So, half. What's your answer? Ikea. <laughs> you don't know. Don't know answer. Never mind, never mind, right? We will we learn here, okay? Half times M. What's M? 20 gram. Okay, so uh I can't use 20 gram. I gotta change it to zero. Oh, you have 1000, uh, 0 by 0 02 kilogram. N mass, mass, then V, 200 square. Got it? Okay, is it okay? Why, why? You look like very suspicious. Right? I'm scared, no? Did I do something wrong? No, I have to follow Oh, yeah, the formula has MV square, right? So it becomes, if you calculate everything, uh, you get 400. That is correct, 400 joules. So this is just plainly using formula. Next one, a car of mass 2,500 kilogram per minute, 72 kilometer per hour. So here's what a problem. Okay, let's see what you get. What do you get? 500,000. Let me check the answer. 500,000. 500,000 is correct. Yeah, why? The problem is here. The problem is this. Kilometer per hour. We don't want kilometer per hour. We want meter per second. That's why when I ask you to memorize the formula, you got to tell me the SI unit, okay? Because if you use the wrong SI unit, you're screwed. So, so the first thing we need to do is to convert this to meter per second. So how do we do that? Uh, so we do this, this is 72 kilometers in one hour, okay, must convert to meter in second. So we do conversion uh, of the numerator first. So 72 kilometer is how many meters times 1,000, right? So it's 72,000 meters. 72 kilometers is 72,000. Uh, are you following? Okay. Then one hour has how many seconds? One hour how many seconds? 
60 times 60 seconds. Next, in your calculator, right, you take this value divided by this value. Uh, let me see, uh, you should get 20. So you get a value of 20, right? So this is 20. Next, we use the formula half mv square, uh, where we will have half times 2500 times v, which is 20 squared. So we end up with 500,000 two jokes. Okay, 500,000 jokes. So it's the same kind of uh, calculation. Next one, next one looks interesting. Okay, similar to mass, 30 kilogram jumps on a diving board, reaches maximum high five. What's the gain in GPE when he reaches the highest point? So uh, GPE formula is MGH, right? MGH, which is just, what's the, uh, this one is a bit interesting. So what is the gain in MGH? What do you get? 600. Nobody. Yeah, MGH. His mass is 30, right? 20 G. Then G is 10. Now the tricky thing is what's the H? The the, the tricky huh? Five. Huh? Okay. The trick this this is a bit of an English thing. They say gain. What's the gain? They never ask what is his. GPE at the highest point. They say, what is his gain in GPE? So if you want to look at gain, you got to look at original, where is he? So it's here. Now at this point, right, does he have GPE at, at this point? Is there gravitational potential energy? Yes. You find the GPE by uh, using three meter. Now at this point, does he have GPE? Yes. So they're trying to find the gain. The gain means from uh, this platform to here, which means the distance is only two meters, right? Five meter minus three meter, so it's only two meters. So six hundred. So this is a gain, uh, gain, uh, right? Now, if the question were to ask, what is his GPE here? Then you use five. Got it? Tricky. Uh. Why like that? Uh? I don't know. <laughs> Just gotta read. Read properly, all right? Oh, actually quite nice that they draw the stick figure like that. Next, at what speed does the swimmer hit the water surface? So you see, this is the kind of uh, question. Um, so what's the CO again? Hmm? GP convert to KE, ma? GB over the K, right? Isn't it? Isn't it the same as what we did just now? At what speed does the swimmer hit the water surface? So, okay, so let's calculate, right? Now, what is his GPE? Now, I, I'm not talking about the gain, okay? What is his GPE here? For part B. Because when he hits the water, the the speed, right, does it depend on 3 meter or 5 meter? 5 meter, no? Because it's total GP is here. Here is only the gain from, from the platform up. So, right, so I need to calculate his uh, original GP at, at the height of 5 meter here. All right, so it's 30 times 10 times 5. Okay, which gives me a value of 1,005. Right, so doesn't mind joules jump down. So one five zero zero equals to half. Uh, M is thirty. V squared. Okay. So this one times here. So so three thousand equals to thirty. So three thousand divided by thirty equals to V squared. Right. Ding ding. 
So v square equals to 100. So v equals to 10 meters per second. Right? Do you guys have the No. This is the third time we're doing this. Okay. Don't worry. Huh? We, we do as many times as it, it takes, okay, for you to uh, figure this out. As many times as possible. Okay, so the diagram shows water in a high depth. What is the form of energy of water at A? How much? GB, huh? GB, huh? Right, gravitational potential energy at B, KE, huh? It's a primary school question. Describe the energy transformation at C. So C is KE convert to uh, EE, electrical energy, okay? Next. Uh, what energy transfer pump produced by the pump? So the pump, right? What does the pump? The pump obviously transfers energy from, I mean, uh, the water from this part to this part. Okay, what does the pump do? Electrical, it needs electricity, right? So what is the conversion? Electrical to kinetic to GBE, right? So it's uh, EE. Okay, GB, right? Now, uh, you see, they, they say mention one. It's got one energy transfer. Now, there are several others, right? For example, the pump is noisy, so you can say electrical to sound. The pump will have heat produced, right? So, but heat also can, right? Electrical to heat, right? So, that's just one source. <clears throat> okay, the mass of 0.1 kg of water is raised to a height of 0.5 meter. Every eh? this one looks so familiar. The GPE gravitational friction is 10. So calculate the GPE gained by the mass uh, every one second. So GPE mgh. So m 0.1 times 10 times 0.5. Okay, so GPE 0.5. So, okay, useful output power of the pump. So, power will work down over time. Okay, power equals to P equals to WD divided by T. Right, now what's the work done in pushing this thing up? 0 0.5 joules. And then maybe you're wondering uh, why joules, huh? Okay, then we go back to our formula, right? Work done is in terms of joules. So if you gain this amount of GB, that means this is the amount of work done, right? This amount of work done. So what is the time taken to uh, to push this amount up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's one. So G1 divided by one. So the power equals to, yeah, 0 0.5. W watt. Okay, how do we know one second is actually given here? Right? Every second. So some of the energy is wasted, so just what happens to this waste energy? <coughs> right? So some of the energy here, right? So uh, I already mentioned, right? So sound converted to sound, sound also converted to heat. So just write heat or sound. So heat. Converted, they were converted. Okay, moving on. So some people tested a motorcyclist crash. <laughs> Alright, so they draw a steel ball, calculate the kinetic energy uh, just before I hit. So half MV squared. Very mechanical right now, huh? Formula half 
and v square. What do you get for that? Hmm? One five two one one, yeah. So one five two one. Go. Okay, the height from which the steel ball is dropped. Uh -huh. Is that done? Doesn't matter, looking for it. Huh? <laughs> okay, never ask How are you? Did you get? Three point oh four two. Do you get three point something? No. Yeah, that's it. Three point oh four two. So now this is reverse, right? So far, we have been calculating uh, GP compared to K. Now it's KD compared to GP. Alright, so 152.1. So our 152.1 is equal to MGH. So now I need to find H, right? So I know G is 10, M is, what's M? M is 5. So 152.1. One divided by <coughs> M and G which is five times ten. So H equals to three point zero four two meters. Okay. So what form of energy does it have before it was dropped? Okay. This one. Okay, that grand fountain can be used in the garden. The pump raised the water to a height of 1.5 meter. Wow. The mass of water pump every minute is 40 kg. Let's get one point energy gain by the water. Ah, GP la, right? GP. Calculate how much energy is gained by 40 gram kg of water when it is raised to a vertical height of 1.5. So we use the formula. Okay, what is the formula? MGH, right? MGH. So it goes to 600. Uh, yeah, 600. So 40 times M, 10 times 1.5, 600 joules. Oh, this one cannot see, yeah. This one do see. Okay, motorcycle rider will combine mass of three during a tall run. The motorcycle accelerate from rest at a constant of eight to the speed is 40. Uh, motorcycle then fell at a constant. Okay, so we gotta read the story. Uh, only I can do because yours is a bit too hard to visualize. So during a, uh, okay. Five seconds. So it reached a rate of eight, uh, this acceleration, until the speed is 40. So first I need to find what is the time. How, how long did it take to reach 40? Five yeah, five seconds. How do you know it's five seconds? Yeah, formula, formula, what's the formula? V minus over T, right? So five seconds to reach 40. Five seconds is like somewhere here, right in the middle. Okay, and then after that, um, constant speed until it reach a further six hundred meter. So six hundred meters. How do you find the distance in a speed time graph? Where is the distance in a speed time graph? Where? 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 
No. Gradient is the acceleration. Rise over run is the acceleration. Gradient is the acceleration. Area is the distance. So I need to create a situation where uh, the distance is 600. So I know that this is 40. Right? Then what's the time? So the 600 divided by 40. Okay, which will give me 15. That means the constant speed is for 15 seconds until, until this part. Okay, 15 seconds. So I draw straight line again. Right here. Continue until 20. Because it lasts for 15 seconds. Right? Then it then comes to a rest of constant is deceleration in the further 8 seconds. So 20 to 28. 28 deceleration. That's it. Okay, so that's how we do this. <coughs> so next one. Okay, kinetic energy. When they're traveling at a constant speed, just use half and V squared. Okay. Half and B square. Um, 40. So kinetic energy 240,000 joules of kinetic energy. Okay, what's the breaking force during the final eight seconds? Breaking force, right? You look at this and say, oh my god, where got force? Where got force? This is speed time, eh? speed time, right? And then after that, you go through all your formulas. Sad, S, T, T, W, W, Sad, S, T, T, and then suddenly, A. Eh? They ask for force, right? They ask for force, right? What's the formula for force that you know of? F equal what? M A. Oh, F equal M A. Then A? This is a speed time graph. Right? Gradient is what? Acceleration. That means if I want to find the force, I know the M, M is 300. Right? So I just need to find A. So what's the acceleration? Acceleration is the gradient. So what's the gradient of this thing? To find gradient, 40 is rise over run. Uh, 40 divided by what? 8. So gradient equals to negative 5. Because it's downward sloping, right? So all right, I got the A, which is negative 5. So F, but I can just use 5. Sorry. So 300. Yeah, very good. Times 5. One five okay. Uh, why you got negative? The reason is very simple. It's because your gradient is negative. Okay, so uh, your f uh, don't you don't we don't put negative value, right? We just put one five zero zero Newton. Okay. Uh, actually, if you put negative five, it's fine. If you, I mean negative, it's fine. If you put negative, sorry, uh, let me reverse. Negative thousand five. So it's a breaking force. Next. Oh, another one already. Last one for this. So the of mass at 5 kg climbs stairs with a height of 8 g is 10. What's the weight? Yeah, W equal mg, right? So you see formula works very well. Calculate the gain in GP. Hmm? Yeah. So formula is MGH. 6,000 joules. And we're done. <coughs> Finish already. Okay, so uh, it's all about formulas. That's all I can say. All right, we're going to stop here for today. I have a great Thursday night. Tomorrow is uh, Friday, uh, TGIF, right? <laughs> Everyone looks forward to Friday. All right.